Violets are blue, and I've got a great No Ohio for you. Okay, I'll admit, I'm no poet, but this guy I'm about to tell you about definitely is, and he used the medium to change opinions and break barriers. His name is Paul Lawrence Dunbar, and he was born in Dayton, Ohio in 1872 to former slaves from Kentucky. Drawing from the stories his mother told him about plantation life, he began writing poems at age six, and by age 14, his work was already published in a local newspaper. And as a student at Dayton Central High School, he teamed up with a friend and classmate you've probably heard of, Orville Wright, to publish the Dayton Tattler, a short-lived newspaper aimed at the black community in Dayton. After high school, without the finances to continue his education, Dunbar was forced to take a job as an elevator operator. But instead of giving up on his poetry, he worked at it even harder, using his meager salary to self-publish his first book of verse, Oak and Ivy. And he quickly earned back his investment by selling copies of his book personally, often to people riding on his elevator. This tenacity, combined with undeniable talent, caught the attention of both the literary community and black leaders. With the support, Dunbar got to work publishing a dozen books of poetry, along with novels, short stories, lyrics, and a play. Dunbar became the first African-American poet to earn national distinction. Dunbar's extraordinary life was cut short when he contracted tuberculosis and died at just 33 years old. But his work lives on. In fact, the title of Maya Angelou's acclaimed autobiography, I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings, is actually a line from a Dunbar poem. Paul Lawrence Dunbar is buried in Woodland Cemetery in Dayton, along with his lifelong friend and early collaborator, Orville Wright.